السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters It's important for us to know that in this world we have been drifting towards materialism in a great way simply because earning and spending has become something that focus has been maintained upon. And it's not wrong to earn. In fact, it is a duty for us to earn a living that is halal. Talabu kasbil halali faridatun ba'd al faridah. To earn a halal sustenance or livelihood is an obligation over and above the other obligations that the Almighty has placed on our shoulders. But my beloved brothers and sisters, it is not the main aim. If you take a careful look of this worldly life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it a deception. Because we are here, we wonder how is it a deception. But I want to explain to you, when you came onto this earth, you were unclothed. They had to clothe you with clothing that they found on earth. Whatever I have on me right now, no matter what it is, we found it on this earth and we will leave it on this earth. We came from somewhere else and we are going to go back. So we shouldn't become so attached to something that is actually very temporary. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَهْوٌ وَلَعِبٌ وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ Indeed, the life of this world or this worldly life is nothing besides play and amusement. And the real life is actually that of the hereafter, if only but they knew. Where was I? A year before I was born. Where were you? A year before you were born. <laughs> Has a time not passed before where man was nothing to even be mentioned? No one has mentioned. You, prior to your birth, they didn't even know you were coming. You didn't know you were coming. Allah knew. When you came onto the earth, Allah says, أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الْإِنسَانُ أَنَّا خَلَقْنَاهُ مِن نُطُفَةٍ فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُبِينٌ Does man not see that we created him from a single droplet of semen? And now that he's grown a little bit bigger, suddenly he becomes argumentative. Who were you? And who are you? Calm down, calm down. Prepare for the day you're going to go back to Allah. That's the message. Let's not think we're too big because of a little bit of money we've made. Let's not think we're too powerful because a little bit of a position that Allah has given us. Let's not think that we are greater than everybody else simply because Allah has given us something in this world. No, true success is the success of the hereafter. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says anyone who gets their book in the right hand, they will be the ones who will be the ultimate, the ultimate from those who succeed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us true success. So in this worldly life, a day will come when you will suffer a loss. And days will come when you make a profit. You have a good job. You have a brilliant income. And suddenly one day, everything comes crashing. It's just Allah testing you. Allah emphasizes by saying, we will definitely test all of you. With what? A little bit of hunger, a bit of fear, loss of wealth, loss of lives around you. This type of loss, difficulty, hardship, whatever it may be. Warfare that happens in another verse, Allah speaks about it. Sickness and illness similar to these that we are facing right now. May Allah grant us all cure and may Allah protect us. 
Allah says, we will test you. So a day for you, a day against you. If you are healthy, your health will never ever remain forever. If you are alive, your life won't remain forever in this world. You have to go somewhere else. Similarly, if you're a person who has wealth, you're not going to remain rich forever. You have a job, it's not going to remain forever. Allah says, we will have to change the days. You know, regarding warfare, Allah says, وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَّامُ نُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ The days, Allah rotates them around for the people. A day you win, a day you lose. A day you gain, a day you lose, and so on. Why? It's a test. When Allah says, I have created you to test you. Wallahi, when you mature a little bit and you think about it, it is absolutely true. Allah has created you to test you because nothing happens according to your liking. It happens according to the liking of Allah. Your very identity was chosen by Allah. Who are you, your parents, your complexion, your race, your nationality, whatever it is that you did not have a say in it. I can only not have a say in something if it is an examination. If it was my own thing, I would have a say in everything. You get the point? You have an exam of any nature on earth. You'll never know the questions in advance. Unless you're in South Africa. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. I see the uncle saying if you have the money. But in the eyes of Allah, obviously that's on a lighter note guys. But in the eyes of Allah, you cannot cheat, you cannot deceive. It's a test. Allah's watching. Nothing that is displeasing to Allah is worth it. Nothing. You know why? You're compromising the hereafter. The eternal hereafter. Nay, Allah says, you love that which is right in front of you now, but you're forgetting about the akhirah, the hereafter, which is everlasting. In Surah Al-A'la, which we hear at times in many of the salawat, especially Jum'ah and Eid, a lot of the times we hear it, Allah says it in there, that you know what? The akhirah, the hereafter, is better than this life by far. So, my brothers and sisters, don't be deceived by the materialism around you. Use it in order to lead a comfortable life within the obedience of Allah. May Allah grant us all good sustenance. Say Amin. May Allah give us wealth that is sufficient for us and wealth that we can use to earn paradise. Imagine Uthman radiallahu anhu. He bought the well. It's a long story. I'm not going to get into it. The Prophet ﷺ says, who is going to buy this well and for them is Jannah. He bought it. For him was Jannah. He came on another occasion. He brought so many thousand camels in order to serve in the cause of Allah. And for him was Jannah. Not once, more than once. Do you know that the endowment on his name is running to this day? Subhanallah. To this day. What type of barakah is this? What type of blessing is this? He was a man. I was reading about Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak. Rahimahullah. One of the great predecessors. They say he was so wealthy, but no one knew. Very few, only his close circles. A year, he would come out for sabilillah, And a year, he would go for hajj. Subhanallah. And he would spend his wealth. And he would send amounts. And people wouldn't even know, where's this coming from? My brothers and sisters, don't you agree? The most favored from amongst us is the one who has the best of both. The best of both. Imagine if Allah has blessed you with a bit and you're leading a comfortable life and He's given you the opportunity to actually worship Him with goodness. Isn't that a favor? And that's why when we are taught a dua, Allah speaks about hajj. May Allah take us all for Hajj and Umrah. Amen. And in Hajj, you know that the dua that you make is actually very important. Remember one thing, not every place that you're going to make a dua is equivalent, is equal. Some places are more noble, more spiritual, more elevated than others. It's better to make a dua in a masjid, for example. Some times are better than others. The third of the, the night... You know, they call it the thuluthul laylil akhir. The last third of the night is more blessed. You really have a problem? Set your clock, get up, cry to Allah. You really have issues? You need to come to the masjid, cry to Allah. Cry to Allah in 
when you have done an act of worship, imagine people going for Hajj. So Allah talks about something very interesting, Surah Al-Baqarah. The dua that people make when they go for Hajj. It's mentioned in the Quran. And Allah gives you two examples. Allah says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ يَقُولُ From among the people, there are some who only say, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقًا they only say, Oh Allah, grant me, grant me, grant me regarding the dunya, regarding this world. But they have forgotten totally the hereafter. So they have no portion of the hereafter in their dua or even in reality. But then Allah says, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ From among the people, there are those who call out in a different way. They say, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ O oh Allah, grant us goodness in this world and grant us goodness in the hereafter and save us from the punishment of hellfire. If you look at that dua, Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ نَصِيبٌ مِّمَّا كَسَبُوا Those are the ones who will get a portion of what they have earned. They have a concern for the hereafter more than the concern for this life. Evidence of it is divide the dua into three. They say grant us goodness in the dunya. That's one portion. Then they say grant us goodness in the hereafter. That's a second portion. Then they say save us from the punishment of hellfire, that's a third portion. How many portions of three are connected to the life after death? And how many are connected to this life? One to this life and two to the others. Allah says, those are the ones who know what's going on. Those are the true believers. Allah says, we want you to lead a good life. We will test you. When we test you, take it in your stride. You will not suffer for more than a short period of time. Be it a year, two years, five years, ten years. What is ten years in your seventy year life? Nothing. Subhanallah. Allah says, take it in your stride. Be patient. Don't be greedy. Thank Allah for the little you have and you will find it with a lot of blessings and barakah. Sometimes you have people who have millions and billions. They can't sleep. And others have a little bit less. But mashallah, they are well, they sleep and so on. Those are the blessings from Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remember my brothers and sisters, whatever you do, a portion, a large chunk of it for the hereafter. And I want to draw your attention to something amazing. I've asked people, and even if I were to ask you, many people would give me a similar answer. You want a little life, you want to get married, you want to have your, your own home, who wouldn't like to have their own little house? You know, a nice place in a nice area where I'm safe and secure. Listen to the words. You look for a location around where, you know, it's considered a decent suburb. I can, inshallah, get this house. My children have a school nearby. We have perhaps a masjid nearby, etc. Mashallah, good. You want a house and you want to have a little investment so that one day you can retire. You no longer need to work and you have a passive income that's coming in. Everyone will tell you that. Don't you agree? My brother, my sister... That preparation is brilliant. I agree. If you have it, Allah blessed you. But the blessing is short. Do you know why? You need to prepare with even greater zeal for the eternal abode in the hereafter. What about your suburb in the hereafter? You don't want to go into the middle of a war zone known as Jahannam. You don't, you don't want to go into the middle of a suburb where everyone is stealing and pinching. The same way you don't want that here. What about there? The way to achieve that, Salatul Fajr. Salatul Isha, your truthfulness, your worshipping Allah alone, your adopting the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, your respect for others. I have noticed something on my own, that sometimes outwardly pious looking people lose the plot by insulting and abusing and belittling others. They lost it. No matter who you are, you need help. I need help. Help what? Doing, achieving what? Fighting shaitan. Do you think shaitan doesn't come to a pious man? I believe shaitan tries different tricks with a pious person. He comes and makes him feel you are pious. Initially he says, no, I'm nobody. But you're very pious. You got up for the hajjud, the others don't. They say, no, I'm nobody. He say, no, but you're extremely pious. Look at the dua you're making, you crying. Yeah, I'm pious, true. Khalas, <laughs> shaitan got you. Why? He convinced you. That's the very moment you start belittling. These guys don't even get up for tahajjud. I am tahajjud. You know? And these guys, what are they? 
you know, we have an issue at the moment with the coronavirus and I take the liberty to say it. There's difference of opinion. So what? Does that, does that give us the license to insult others? You follow the view you believe is correct and move on. Don't compromise your akhirah by arguing and fighting and belittling and swearing and insulting. That is against the sunnah, against Islam. You're compromising your paradise. Allah grant us Jannah. This is why I say, let's not forget where we are focused. This world is only a means to get to where? Jannah tul firdaus. I want it. And you want it. And we all want it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. My beloved brothers and sisters, one of the best things you could give another. You know, they say, we are mu'mineen. Give gifts. When you give gifts to one another, what would happen? It would increase the love between you by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the best gifts you can ever give a person is to be genuine with them. To be sincere with them. A deenun nasiha. Deen is sincerity. When you are sincere with someone, you speak to them in a respectful way, in agreement and in disagreement. They asked him, to whom should we be sincere? Be sincere in your relationship with Allah. So you will worship him alone. Be sincere in your relationship with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you will adopt his sunnah with humility. Because some people adopt it with arrogance. They have also lost. Remember, shaitan comes all the time. All the time. May Allah protect myself and yourselves. Be sincere with the leaders of the Muslims, the leaders, when you belittle the leaders and when you insult them and abuse them, you lose leadership and the boat or the ship is left without a captain, which is worse than having a captain who has a flaw or two. The leaders are not prophets of Allah. They will have a flaw or two. Respect your leaders. Look at any community where the ulama are belittled. It's lost. When you have disrespected ulama, you've lost the plot. Your, your ship has rocked to the degree that shaitan takes over. But people don't realize this. Whether you have a difference or not, what does it cost you to be respectful? You can come to the scholar and say, I very strongly disagree with you and I believe you are totally wrong. Jazakallah khair. But I love you and I respect you. Allahu Akbar, what did it cost you? Instead of insulting and swearing and hurling abuses such that the... Imam would have to look into the dictionary to say, what did this uncle say? He thinks it's a good word and he realizes it's a bad word. Who lost and who gained? Allah grant us goodness. That's not piety. That is far from piety. And worse is when people begin to think that, oh, it's piety when you insult another alim. We are pious. We are high. We have a very high moral standing. Therefore, we are allowed to insult everyone else. That is exactly Iblis's policy. That's what he thought. Ana khayrum minhu. You, I am better than him. I have the right to do whatever I want. He doesn't. Subhanallah. I need to cry for Jannah the same way you need to cry for Jannah. I need to cry the same way you need to cry. All I need to do, learn to respect people. When you see someone astray, your nasiha, your nusha inside you, the genuineness, the sincerity should make you think hard. Before I talk to him, let me cry for one week on my musalla, making dua for him. After that, I will talk to him with utmost respect. Subhanallah. Where are the akhlaq? As the generations are passing, we're losing akhlaq among the scholars. No more akhlaq, no character, no conduct. Whereas the Prophet ﷺ says, khiyarukum ahasinukum akhlaqan. The best from amongst you are those who are best in character and conduct. That's what it is. Where's your character? You think because you're a person whom Allah gave something, whether it's wealth or knowledge or looks or whatever it may be, position, that you have the right to disregard akhlaq for a minute in order to project something you want to say? When the Prophet ﷺ spoke to Abu Jahl with respect, he spoke to Al-Akhnas ibn Shuraik with respect. He spoke to Abu Sufyan before he was a Muslim with respect. That's why a lot of them came to the deen. We chase our youngsters away from Islam because we have made the main focus this dunya. We want to win a war in this world. That's the thing. And we do it in a way that is unacceptable in Islam. 
أَلْهَاكُمُ التَّكَاثُرُ حَتَّى زُرْتُمُ الْمَقَابِرُ What a powerful surah. Allah says, you know what? Amassing material items has led you astray until you visit the graveyards. Then you will know. Then definitely you will know. And then you will know with your eyes you will have seen. Subhanallah. Allah says, you know what? Visit those graveyards. The Prophet says, "Kuntu nahaytukum an ziyarat al qubur ala fazuruha, fa innaha tu dakirukum al akhira." I used to prohibit you from visiting the graves. Visit them; they will remind you of the hereafter. We're going to go there. May Allah subhanahu wa taala grant us all jannatul firdaus, and may Allah subhanahu wa taala bless every one of us and forgive our shortcomings and help us focus. Let's learn to respect one another so that we don't lose our akhira. Together with our ibadah, together with whatever we want, always ask Allah for goodness in this world, goodness in the hereafter. One of the ways that people compromise their akhira is when they insult and belittle one another. There, there are many narrations that I will not go into right now, but inshallah, inshallah, if we give importance to this matter, we will make living in our communities one of the most favorable and beautiful things. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad.